All right. I think we should start. So we didn't finish the external flow yet. There is one thing that uh, we didn't go through, which is uh, non-circular pipes. And also, when you have a bunch of pipes, so not just one pipe, but a lot of them, how can you actually calculate the heat transfer across them? And we said in, in this chapter, we will just simply deal with two equations, solve every problem. Q is equal H A delta T, right? The H multiplied by the area multiplied by the temperature difference between the air at T infinity and the surface at T S. Whether that surface is a cylinder, rectangle, sphere, right? Flat plate. And the second equation is an equation to calculate the H, the heat transfer coefficient of that external flow. And that H will come as part of Nusselt number. You will get the H as Nusselt number equal to bunch of stuff. And those bunch of stuff usually is are always in that range or in that form. Reynolds number multiplied by a parental number. Right? And we said why? Because the heat transfer is happening by, yes, it's happening by conduction at the first layer, but how quickly does this heat or that bound layer get changed, get refreshed with a new charge of cold air, for example. That depends entirely on the air flow, how quickly the flow is moving so that you will always get T infinity near the wall and you improve the heat transfer. If you don't have the air moving, the, the heat will build up near that hot surface, if we are cooling it, and you will lose the heat transfer. The conduction with the first layer will get weakened and weakened because now it's conducting with a very hot air rather than with a fresh T infinity air. All right? So that's why we expect the velocity of the air to, to show up or the Reynolds number. And you can see in, in all those uh, all those formulas. So this is the formula for flow around the circle, circular cylinder. Flow around the square cylinder. So what is a square cylinder? Basically a duct, a very long duct with a square cross section. Square tilted. 45 degree, right? Hexagon, hexagon tilted, 45 degree, ellipse, vertical plate. So all those geometry, you will always see the edge, which is inside this Nusselt number. It's function of Reynolds multiplied by Prandt, right? The difference is the coefficient. The coefficient are different. Why? Because those all, all those correlation are experimental correlation. The, the flow itself is very complex, and therefore they just did the experiment and, and we remember we saw the, the flow behind the cylinder last time and behind the sphere, and we, we showed that it's different when it's laminar than turbulent, than, and even within turbulent there was something called the drag crisis, when suddenly the boundary layer become turbulent, and suddenly the wick was smaller, and suddenly, so the flow is different from, and that's why they have to split those correlation. There is no one series that will fit all, right? So that's why they split, the range in bunch of Reynolds number. And depending on your Reynolds number, you would pick the correlation that would fit the data the best. And so th that an extra level of problem with you solving the homework or exams. So not only you have to put your hand on, here is Q equal H A double multiplied by delta T, and then an equation for Nusselt number, but the equation for the Nusselt number is, just, is not just one equation for a flow around the sphere. Right now, there is a bunch of prob not bunch of correlation for the flow around a cylinder, and just have to pick the right one. Or even if it's a square, is it normal square or tilted? Hexagon, is it flat or tilted? So that basically an extra source of error because you really have to put your hand on the right correlation, right? And and we understand why there are so many and. Again, because they are trying to fit all those complex phenomena with one correlation. All right? And your homework that's due on Wednesday is simply a s someone putting his arm in the wind, and we're trying to calculate the heat transfer from this surface, his arm. So QH A delta T, H A multiplied delta T. And again, you have to put your hand on the correlation for the H or the Nusselt number which one will give you the right edge to use, right? And remember that we have to listen to the formulas. If the formulas say all properties are t inf at t infinity, like the flow around the sphere, okay, we do it t infinity. 
if the correlation say all properties are at T fel, which is Ts plus T infinity, we also have to stick to what they say because that's how they correlated the data. All right? They took the renewals number based on the film temperature and they saw that that renewals number to power 0.7 would be the best. If you have used the other T infinity, the other, uh, not, trust, just, not just T film, but only T infinity, and you came up with a renewals number based on T infinity, the power could probably be different. And which one is best? Probably the one that they end up picking is the best. That's why they stick with it. All right? By, by best mean it fit the data much better. Data are not scattered that much around it. It has longer range. It's not only valid for a small range of news number, but it's all over the domain is, is good fit. All right? So what I'm saying is that don't trouble yourself too much over why the sphere stick they say T infinity and then in the cylinder they say T fell. Okay, it's just the way they fit the correlation. Right, now let's do the the flow across two banks. So as, as you guys answered correctly last time, we should expect the performance of 20 cylinders sitting in rows <coughs> after each other to behave a little bit different from just cylinder standing by itself. Right, because of the, the, the wake of the first row is affecting the flow behind the second, and therefore, and also the, the air, if we are cooling them, the air getting hotter and hotter, right? So eventually, you know, if we have a lot of them, we should expect the last cylinder not to do anything, because it's already surrounded by very hot air, for example, right? So we'll see how we are going to do this. So there is two configuration, as you can see in the picture in the cartoon inline configuration which basically they are sitting in a square lattice or staggered where the flow leaving the the first if I get my hand here the flow leaving the first will basically go through in between the two uh, cylinder behind before he hit the next the third row right and this is the square lattice where basically the flow from here uh, hit the second one directly and here's a cartoon of the two of them. And you probably realize that, well, this guy probably saving a lot of space because they can stack them together, right? They stack them very, very close together compared to something like this. And note that we cannot really jam them head to head because otherwise we'll not have any flow. You still have to leave some space for the air to go through. So important to solve problem in this, we will we'll actually solve a problem right now, problem 85 in our uh, in our textbook, but we'll, we'll see the correlation first and then we'll solve a problem. So one important thing to, to solve on those things is to realize that what is the area? Eventually this problem will still be solved by Q equal H A delta T. Every single problem in this, in this chapter, Q is H A delta T. What area should we use? Total area, right? All those cylinders, they are all our area. So it's basically by dl, that's the circumference, by d, multiply by l, that's the lens, multiply by their number, right? So that's, that's the area. So now, we also, you, sh you should expect the Nusselt number, which where we are going to get the edge, to have Reynolds number and Prandtl number. There's nothing new, we should expect that. Now, for the Reynolds number, we need a velocity. Right? To fit inside the number. Which velocity? Notice that is this velocity V, the, the velocity approaching the pipe, the pipes, the tubes, will this velocity be the same as the velocity between the cylinders? No. Why? Because the, the area changed, right? It's because the area now is smaller. The flow needs to go to, into a smaller area, and therefore, the velocity will go up, assuming the density of air or water to be almost constant. For such small velocity, we can get away with assuming even air to be incompressible. Right? So, now which velocity should we use? The big one or the small one? The small one or the big one? The small velocity, the 
say, 8 meter per second or the 10 meter per second. By the way, can you calculate that velocity for me if we want to? Are you going to calculate the velocity between the pipes in this case, in line? If this is approaching 8 meter per second, how could you tell that the velocity in the middle between the pipes is like 10 meter per second? So what's the equation? Huh? Right, which is? No, the, the one before Bernoulli. The Bernoulli. Bernoulli is good to get the pressure if you know the velocity. If I'm asking you what is the new pressure, you would have said, well, let's use Bernoulli to, to say that if he speed up, his pressure will drop. That's why Bernoulli is useful. But if I'm giving you that up here it's 8, I mean, let's write it. What if the velocity here is 8 meter per second? How can anyone get the velocity here? What is that equation, flow the equation that Miller is talking about? The Reynolds D1A1 equals A2. Excellent. And your name is? Remind Del. me. Dell is saying A V equal A V. Originally, it's rho A V equal rho A V. Right? That's the, what do you call this equation? Continuity equation, right? Or conservation of mass. The kilogram per second coming at the front door should be the same kilogram per second going in the middle, same as the kilogram per second leaving. There is no mass that is disappearing on us, right? Unless we have nuclear reaction, then mass could disappear, but we are not doing nuclear reaction in this course, right? So actually, we are doing nuclear reaction in the other course in, in next week, so that's why it's in my mind. So uh, as long as the mass is constant, rho EV equal rho EV. Right? No storage. We are not storing anything in the middle. And let's even cancel row with row. So it's AV equal AV. Right? So that velocity, the 8 meter per second, multiply by this, should be the that velocity we are looking for. Let's call it V maximum. Multiply by Right, which is, basically, I wanted you to say this, which is ST minus, so ST, see, the, look at this drawing. ST is the, the pitch, basically, in the, in the vertical direction, for example. So ST minus the diameter, right? Because this is D over 2, and this is D over 2. So ST minus the diameter, that is the new area, area 2, right? So V max multiplied by this small area is equal to A1 multiplied by ST. All right? That's how you can get your velocity. Now back to the original question. So which velocity I will use in Reynolds number so I can calculate the Nusselt number so I can get my H and eventually say Q equal H A delta T? Which velocity, small or the big? Huh? So if, if you are thinking, well, what it will be the velocity over here, and what is the velocity over there, the answer is those all those velocity will be the same because because on top of steady state also because I'm assuming incompressible flow, really. So so to start with, all those velocity are the same, right? And and this eight meter per second will be eight meter per second here again will be eight meter per second here again. Right? And, and let me stress before I answer your question is that 8 meter per second we are talking about and the 10 meter per second we are talking about, that's just the average velocity. The flow actually is, as you can see, there is a lot of wakes and a lot of, this is our average velocity. The flow is actually very complex 2D flow behind those cylinders. Right? This is just telling ourselves, no, 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 let's assume it's just one velocity coming in here and one velocity shooting in here. So now again, which one of those velocities I should use in my Reynolds number? The 10 meter per second or the 8 meter per second? Assuming as if this is 10 meter per second. The one in the middle is 10 and the one upstream is 8. Which one should I use in my Reynolds number? 10 here, Jason, right? 
What's your name? Uh, James. James saying 10. Anyone would like to say 8? Brandon is saying 8 plus 10 over 2. <laughs> And I'm, I am really impressed that you are confused because there shouldn't really be an answer to this question. Meaning, someone should have said it is based on the correlation. It's based on the correlation. It's based on the correlation. Basically, they could pick just like is T infinity or T film should be the property. Well, it's what they correlated this correlation on. So if they could actually have made this Nusselt number correlation that we'll see based on Vmax, they could have also made it based on V minimum. Actually, Vmax and V minimum are related to each other. It's just the area. So they we will just stick to the formula. All right? All right, very good. So over here when it's it's a staggered uh, geometry, so you will have area T and you have area D I guess the diagonal area and, and the transverse area and this is the picture in the vertical direction and in the flow direction and you can see those correlation or those equation really make sense that area one the area for the flow at one so that we can get the velocity multiplied by that area equal to the velocity going to the other area Area one is ST time L. What's L? That's the length normal to this page. All right? So basically saying the flow here is going through this disk, or sorry, the rectangle. Okay? It's a rectangle with height ST and length normal to the page L. And that area T is ST minus D and this diagonal area is SD minus D because uh, we call this SD diagonal and you can get this diagonal from this rectangle sorry this triangle right you know this and you know the distance over here so this square is this square plus this square correct so you can get SD right and this is the equation that you guys just came up with Right, and here the diagonal pitch again from that from that triangle is SL plus ST over 2, the whole thing square under square root. So SL from here to here, SL, and this is ST over 2. So this square plus this square is S diagonal. Right, and so the, the real number in our collision will be based on v max. All right, and and don't ask why. It, this is just the real number they choose, and that's basically how they are going to base the real the Nusselt number on eventually. But let me just also stress. So I I try to stress that. Those anything could work really, but also let me stress that something will work better than the others. All right. So, for example, they cannot really base this correlation on the velocity on the highway in Tulsa. It's not to, at all related, right? Mm -hmm. So, what I'm trying to say is that if you pick a velocity that's a little bit removed from the heat transfer boundary layer. The boundary is responsible for eventually the Q equal H A delta T. That velocity will, is not changing the boundary layer or not related strongly to the boundary layer. It wouldn't make the formula persist for over a big range. Right? So we are going to base on the Vmax. And so the Vmax, uh, in this case, for a staggered correlation, is based on as you can see here, st minus the diameter, because this is d over 2, d over 2. So st minus the d over 2, and d over 2 would be basically st minus d, and that would be the vmax. Right? And that v is the upstream, undisturbed velocity. 
So before they approach the pipe, they were V under, when they go through the pipe, that would be their V max, and we will basically use a news number based on this. All right? And uh, for stagger and ST, SD smaller than ST plus D over two, there will be another V max, and it will be like this. So that's when, when the area is really tiny. See, in, in this geometry over here, the minimum area, which would correspond to the maximum velocity, would move from here, you think that is the minimum area, to now this. Okay? Just because of, the, of that geometry of the staggered geometry. All right, so the flow is coming like this, and we said that this is called S diagonal pitch. So, I delete all this again. So again, this is the minimum area, and therefore the maximum velocity. And so the Vmax will end up being this correlation or ST my over to SD minus D multiplied by V. How could you tell whether you should use this or this? Well, if you notice that S diagonal is smaller than ST plus D over two, that make it uh, the smaller area, and therefore you use this. I guess the problem we are going to solve right now is in line. So in case of inline geometry, it's, it's very easy. The minimum area is basically in front of us here. But in case it's staggered, you just have to basically ask yourself, or maybe you can calculate it twice, just to be on the safe side. So calculate V maximum from the first formula, calculate V maximum from the second formula. And the one that will be V maximum, that's the one that you will use in the nearest number. Does this make sense? So the news number is based on Vmax, and Vmax would happen at the minimum area, and we will get it from area 1 V equal, or area and upstream time V is minimum area multiplied by Vmax. And the minimum area would come from either, or the Vmax would come either from this formula or that formula. And finally, here is the Nusselt number equation. Right? So as promised, it's Reynolds multiplied by a Prantle. Right? Reynolds to power M, Prantle to power N, and a C. And those constant and those powers are basically in all those tables. You can see the power of the Reynolds and the Prantle and the coefficient. What are those tables? They are tables for different range of Reynolds numbers. Again, because the flow behind the cylinder could be laminar, turbulent, Turbulent with a uh, very high, uh, very strong weight behind it. So that's why the different coefficient. All right? So say we are in line arrangement, we will basically calculate Reynolds max, our Reynolds based on the V max, and depending on the range, we will pick the correlation. What's the other parental multiplied by parental S? That's the correction for the surface, how hot the surface is. So all properties except for PRS are to be evaluated at the arithmetic mean temperature, or basically TI plus T exit over two. That's the inlet air temperature, that's the outlet air temperature, cooling those cylinders, and TS, or parental S, is at the surface temperature. All right? So one of you could ask me right now, why we are not basing it on T infinity, like the cell in, like the sphere, or why didn't we base it on at least the film temperature, which is T infinity plus T S over two, and again, well, they choose this and it end up correlating pretty well with all those things over here, all right? So and and. You should expect T S to, to do something. And yes, it does. And, and that's why it's here in this. Right? And also when you think about it, T exit 
What makes the exit higher or lower? What we control the exit? It's TS. So TS is implicitly inside the exit. You bring 20 degree C air and you let him go through 100 degree uh, C pipes and he, he will get pretty hot at the middle. But if he goes through 50 degree pipes and not 100 degree, he will not get that hot. So what I'm saying is that the physics is there. There is nothing really weird. It's just the way they choose to correlate those phenomena. Right? Questions? Right. So that constant actually, so that constant is all those values, 0 0.9, 0 0.52, 0 0.27, 0 0.03, okay. right? This, so that constant is all those guys, depending on the range. And that constant basically implicitly correct for all the complex phenomena that we are ignoring. You know, for example, the, the velocity profile that we are ignoring and, and saying that, you know what, it's, let's just assume uniform velocity. For the weak, for the, the fact that the properties are not just at the mean temperature, the arithmetic mean, the inlet and the exit. The air is not just sitting at that temperature. There is temperature profile. So that constant basically make basically all our errors get corrected by, by that number. So eventually, all this data end up correlating pretty well if you get this constant to be this number, based on expansions. Right? But what's also nice, I would like to say this about this constant is, so when, when I was a, a student doing my, my PhD, so we, we try to come up with those formula ourselves, so we try to invent them. So you have a new phenomena that no one studied before, and you try to come up with this correlation. So, and, and it takes time. One, one correlation took me like almost a month trying to come up with it. And it came when I'm watching the TV in front of my wife, actually. So we are sitting like this, and I was thinking, well, how can I do this? Because I tried for a month, and it didn't work. And the idea hit me that that flow is based on, basically, a flow between two plates. Why do that? I correlate? So I immediately grabbed a piece of paper. I started writing it, and when I went to the work next day, it did work. That theory that I com came up with and, and all those things are usually very idealized. You think, say, let's say I'm trying to come up with a theory with the heat transfer inside this classroom. So I'm thinking, well, I have 40, 30 students in the classroom. Let's imagine every one of them is like a cylinder. You are not cylinders. But I'm assuming you are a cylinder. And let's assume that every one of them had constant heat generation depending on how tough the problem is. So if the problem is, is tougher, then the heat generation will increase. All those simplification, when I finally try to calculate how much Q I'm coming up with, and I would say that Q is the number of cylinder multiplied by difficulty of the, of the problem, and I write this formula, I have to say multiply by constant. And that constant, the simple theory, have no way to predict. The experiment will basically get that constant for me. Then we will measure the temperature in the, or the heat generation inside the classroom, and we try to measure also the difficulty of the problem I'm putting in here. And if that constant end up being of order of one, like those guys, 0 0.9, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, that's, that's order of one. It's not 100, it's not 0 0.00005. It's around one. If that constant end up being one, then that show that the theory is not totally it's not totally basically a dream. It's really working. It's very close. Yes, it has been very idealized, but still it was correlated with a constant of order of one. So every time we try to publish the results in our research, we always say, and see the constant is of order of one. That proved that the thing, of course, on top of that, the actual proof is that the line really goes through the data, right? So if we plot the heat generation against the difficulty of the problem, in the classroom, it will end up being correlated very well with that line, all right? So what I'm trying to say is that there is a significance of why this number of almost is of order of one, all right? It showed that they had the right physics in this correlation. They didn't just fake any numbers, okay? Because there is a danger 
you can pick any other number and, and you will still be able to put a line but that line will be multiplied by the number to power 1 million right that's not really a good correlation it doesn't capture the physics right so again in that table our difficulty will just be basically calculate the Reynolds number correctly and get the right formula to calculate the nozzle get the H out of it and then say Q equal H A delta T all right of course in that Q equal H A delta T you can ask for the Q or you can ask for the area or you can ask for the delta T and that would be horrible because if we don't know the delta T we will have to why so horrible if we don't have delta T so we said the problem would end up being Q equal H A delta T and he could ask for any of those H A or Q or delta T if he asked for the delta T this would be a very tough problem because Exactly. So Miller is saying all those correlation to work, you need the needles, you need the property, rho and a new. To get those properties, you need the property, the, the temperature, right? So that you can hit the table and get the density and the viscosity. And so if you don't really know the temperature, you will have to assume it. And then you go through a try and error. But if you know the temperatures, so you know the properties, all you have to do is just basically plug the H in get his Q or get his area, right? The Q is the easiest. The area would be a little bit difficult because you just have to count how many cylinders. But that's okay, right? Right, so again, we stress that all properties except for BRS are evaluated at the arithmetic mean of the inlet and outlet temperature of the, tem of the fluid and the parental is S is evaluated at TS, right? So, so that, that was the H. And he said that Nusselt number that we calculated from any of those correlations based on the use number, this is for Q banks more than 16 rows. So there are basically 16 rows of, um, is that too big? What do you think? 16 rows of pipeline, do you think that's too much? Or it's common or? Huh? We don't pass off most of the time, hundreds. Right, so that, that's not really a big number at all. In, in heat exchanger or condenser, there are really huge number of pipes. Right? You feel really sorry for the people has, that have to clean them from time to time, actually. So that condenser in the power station in Jinx, across the river actually, um, from where I live. They, they have very big heat exchanger, of course. It's like 1,000 megawatt power unit. And they actually clean every pipe with a gun and basically uh, some kind of a brush. And they shoot the brush in every one of those pipes so that they can clean the inside of the pipe. The biggest vessel we've built by far ever is, uh, it weighed something like 150 tons, but it had 1,000 uh, and 440 pumps. So it's huge, right? Yeah. When okay. I was a student, I was under, when I was uh, undergrad, I actually did an internship in another power station. It was like uh, 1,200 megawatt power station. And on that, they actually used the river water to for the heat exchanger, for the condenser. So basically, the it gets even dirtier because it's just dirty water from the river, mm -hmm. not like over here in Jinx, they have a closed cycle. So they take the water from the condenser, send it to a cooling tower, air cooled by the air, and then they bring it back again to the condenser. But if you are using water from the river into your heat exchanger condenser, that's a lot of mud, basically. Of course, you try to uh, plug the fish by putting a screen so that the fish wouldn't come in. But so they clean over there by basically sending rubber spheres. So not shooting every single one of them. They basically just let rubber spheres, actually, or rubber ball go through all of them randomly. They just send them in, and hopefully every one find its way, or at least some of the cylinders get, some of the cube get a bunch of spheres. And then the first pass was small spheres. 
And then the second time, they send even bigger rubber spheres so that they can really scratch the surface. Or not scratch, but at least try to remove the mud from the surface. Right? The end of the story is there is so many pipes, and so skistine rows of pipes is not really much. So if it's skistine or more, we will we will use any of those depending on the use number. If it's less, then we need a correction factor. So that Nusselt number that we calculated multiplied by an F will be the Nusselt number for the actual scenario, actual heat exchanger or condenser we have. How we can pick this F? It's from that table. So the F is basically those numbers over here. 0 0.07, 0 0.7 all the way to 0.99. All right? And so say let's have, we have five rows. So we go here, five rows, and it's in line. So the correction factor is 0 0.93. So you multiply by 93 times the Nusselt number that you came up with that one. OK? All right, and that's what we are going to do. So why don't we, uh, let me solve a problem now. Actually, let's, let's say one more thing before we solve the problem. So, there are all those cylinders, right? sitting like this, and the air is coming at T in, and he's leaving at T exit. And we said those guys are sitting at T S. All right? And we are going to say that Q is H A delta T. So something minus T S. What is that something? Is it T inlet or T exit? The delta T we are talking about T inlet, anyone saying T exit? The temperature at X. Huh? The temperature at? X. What's X? Well, it wouldn't be the interior or the exit. So notice that H that we came up from using this Nusselt number, that is yeah. average H. Okay. That's the H everywhere. It's not H at the beginning, it's not H at the end. That's the average H. So my question for you now, when I'm using this H multiplied by the area of all the cylinders, T mean, right? right. So T mean, not T inlet, not T outlet. The air really is at, when it comes to this equation, Q is H A multiplied by temperature difference. Air minus surface, it should be the mean. And, and you are probably tempted to think that T mean should be the arithmetic mean, meaning inlet plus exit over two, right? And, and that's pretty good for most cases. However, when the case is that TS is like this, and there is huge difference between T inlet and T exit, that arithmetic mean that you guys are planning to use would end up being this, right? This is not a good representation of the heat transfer temperature difference. So the delta T that you would like to use in the equation QHA delta T that arithmetic mean is not a good average if there is a huge difference between this and this. Right? What, what do I mean by huge average? If huge difference is basically difference is more than 40%. Right? So I'm talking about huge difference between T inlet and T out. So if delta T1 let's call this delta T1 and this is delta T2. Ouch. So if the difference between delta T1 and delta T2 is more than 40%, so that's a big range, right? Then it, the arithmetic average become basically a little bit uh, problematic. It will give us an error. So what is the best way then to use? Not the arithmetic average, but logarithmic average. 
So let's call it delta t logarithmic mean. What is delta t logarithmic mean? It's delta t at the exit minus delta t at the inlet over len delta t exit over delta t inlet. All right? So it, it look really uh, difficult to do, but it's not. It just what I'm saying is that if this is like 10 and this is like 2 degree, don't say it's 10 plus 2 over 2. Just say it's 10 minus 2 over len 10 over 2. All right? So that logarithmic mean or log mean temperature different, that's always accurate. All right? It's always accurate, whether the delta T is small or big. And eventually, it become almost like the arithmetic mean. So the arithmetic mean is a good approximation of the logarithmic mean when the temperature difference become very, very small. Of course, in a problem like this, if you know if the TS is like this and the T inlet is here and T outlet is here. So the TS is also changing. And let's say this is 10 degree and this is 10 degree. Which one should I use, the logarithmic mean or the Log the logarithmic mean or the mathematical mean? 10%, 10 degree, no, this is 10 degree and 10 degree the difference here. So TS is cooling like this while the air is heating up, being heated like this, for example. So the metal is at TS and the air is at T inlet and then it leaves at T exit. Which one should I use? Exactly, so there's no question really. So if, if delta T1 and delta T2 is just 10, then delta T is 10, all right? The only difficulty become when you don't have the same delta T between the surface and the fluid that's trying to cool it or heating it, all right? When, when there is this difference, then you should question which one should I use? The te temperature difference in the inlet or the outlet? Which one is a good representation of the heat transfer? And the answer is always the logarithmic mean is more accurate. All right? It's just that the mathematical mean a little bit more convenient because you'd say, although I don't really see it that much easier. Right? If it, in, if it enters at 10 degrees and leaves at 10 degrees, wouldn't there be no heat transfer? No, not that the surface is cooling down while the air is heating up. Right? So he's always, the surface is always, it's like in counter flow. We have one complete chapter for heat exchanger design. But you can always, you can have, as long as you have temperature difference between the hot surface and the cold fluid, you'll always have heat transfer. Right? right. But it seems to me like the T, the eggs will get cooler. As, well, it depends. To me, it would change as long as there's heat transfer. Because something would be heating up or something would be cooling. So in, in this sketch that I draw, the surface is always heating the fluid. Okay. And as a result, the surface is cooled. So why in our case, we have been talking about constant TS? Mm -hmm. Well, it's assuming that the, the inside of that surface has basically steam condensing. Mm -hmm. Say if steam is condensing, okay, or water is boiling, they usually happen at constant temperature. So there is a lot of heat transfer, but it just, the other phase is, or the other fluid is not changing its temperature because of all that Q. He's taking that Q, that energy you are sending to him, or taking it from him, to change his phase. phase. But it's still, joules are passing from one fluid to the other. All right? Okay, guys, so the logarithmic mean is always accurate, all right? And you can get away with the Mathematical mean if the temperature difference is not that much, namely 40%. And so he's saying that Q is HA delta T logarithmic mean. Okay, don't think this is weird. It's just another way to say T mean minus TS. Right? It's more accurate way to say T mean minus TS. And on the other hand, that Q we are sending to the fluid is increasing the fluid temperature. So Q is H A delta T, but it's also M dot fluid, C B fluid, D exit minus T in it. All right? And this is how you can calculate T exit, if you want to. So from this equation, 
that the, the fact that Q is H A delta T and it's also M dot C B delta T fluid, not this delta T is different from that delta T. This is what happened to the fluid. This is the delta T involved in the heat transfer problem. T S minus T fluid or T fluid mean minus T S. So from that, if you just make those two equations together, this would be the T exit. Right? So T exit is T S minus T S minus T inlet multiplied by the exponent of minus A H over M dot C P. How did he come up with this? Just put those guys next to each other. And if you have something, if A is log equal, if A is uh, log X, right? Then you would say that X is e to power A. Correct? Okay. All right. And here, the last thing we need to know is that the, the area is by dL multiplied by n, where n is the number of cylinders, the total number. All right? And M dot of the fluid going through rho V A. That's M dot, rho V A, and that's the A. So the A is, he's basically saying the A is ST multiplied by L. So that's the length of the pipe. ST is the uh, pitch in the transverse direction. Multiply by how many of them? All right? So he's basically saying V multiplied by the whole area, the cross-sectional area. V multiplied by the whole cross-sectional area. Multiply by rho, that's the M dot. You imagine that, right? Very good. So let's let's solve a problem and then uh, we can go to the pressure drop in a second. Right, so this is uh, problem 785 in our textbook. All right, and so he said there is water, and the water is sitting at 15 degree, and it's supposed to be heated to 65 degree by passing it over a bundle of four meter long so those pipe are four meter long one centimeter diameter pipe one centimeter diameter resistant uh, heater rod maintained at 90 degree so TS is 90 degree of course, this was T inlet, and this is T exit. And uh, the water approached the heat rod bundle in normal direction at a mean velocity of 0.8. So the velocity here, V, is 0.8 meter per second. Of course, that's not V max, right? V max would be the velocity in here. And the rods are arranged in, in line arrangement. So all of them are basically in, in line. And he's telling us that the, the SL is four centimeter. And the S T is three centimeter. Right. Determine the number of tube pros in L in the flow direction needed to achieve the indicated temperature rise. So he's basically saying what is N L? Not that there is N T in here. And there's NL. So how many NL is needed to achieve the indicated temperature rise? So 
you need to think where is this NL involved in the problem. Again, all of those heat transfer problem falls down to one equation. The equation is, let's write the equation first. The equation is, what's the key equation that solves this problem? Yes, the Q is H A delta T. And let's now, since we know that delta T logarithmic mean is even better, let's just say delta T logarithmic mean. That is the one equation that all those problems revolve around, right? It's just that there is a big mess calculating that H from the Nusselt number, all right? But that's basically what the problem should be based on. So now, where is this NL would be? The area. The area should have NL in it. Right? Where else the NL is involved? So by the way, the NL is involved in the area because the area is by DL multiplied by multiplied by NL multiplied by It's basically NL and NT, right? So four line times five vertical, so it's like 20, right? So the, the total number of pipes is not just five rows, it's like five rows and then how many pipes per row? So like 10 vertical, five horizontal, so five times 10, that's 50 pipes. 50 pipes times by DL, that's the total area. So NL is in the area, of course, right. So that's what we are trying to find out. So we better find everything else. But back to my other question, where is NL will also show up? For a free homework. You don't have to submit the homework on Wednesday. It's N. What's NU? The Nusselt number? Yeah. Why? Because you have to have the fraction back. Excellent. What's your name again? Eric, have a free homework. It's inside, remember that there is one correlation for a lot of pipes, but then if they end up being 16 or less, we have to add a correction factor. So that's, that's a problem because if NL is inside the H, and you know that I, in order to come up with NL from this equation, I have to know everything, right? So that's a problem. How are we are going to overcome this problem? Assume, right. Jacob saying, well, let's assume it's bigger than 16, get away from that correction factor, and then calculate in L, and if it turns out it's more than 16, we are done. If not, it turns out that it's 5, we go again and try and error, right? That would be the same scenario if he's asking about the temperature at the exit for example, right? So if you ask about temperature at the exit, we have the same problem. The Nusselt number is function of that temperature. How can I get the Nusselt number if he's asking about the temperature? Assume the temperature, get the Nusselt number, calculate the temperature, then tell yourself, well, was my assumption really far away or is it okay? Right? And so when, when you make assumption, always try to make the assumption that makes sense, so that you don't really force yourself to go to a try and error, all right? So for example, a really bad case here would be to say, let's assume n equal, nl equal one, and then let's do the correction. Chances are it's not going to be one. Or if you are basically trying to calculate t exit, you would say, let's assume it's almost like t inlet. You are shooting yourself in the leg, right? You are forcing yourself to go to another try and error. But if you aim a little bit bigger, or higher, or in the right direction. It's like you are shooting ducks, you know, it, ducks, if you are shooting at them, you shouldn't really shoot at the duck, you should shoot a little bit in front of it. Right, so that the bullet will eventually hit. So you always try to, to aim in the right direction in your assumption. You assume the duck will go this way. All right, so we, we will get the we will assume NL and we will get the H, all right? Delta uh, T, I think we have it, right? Because we have TS and we have T inlet and T outlet. What else is missing from this equation before we can get delta, t before we can get the area? Anything missing? Delta T, we have it. H, we will try to get it in a long way. Q. 
Q. We don't have the Q. We have to get the Q before we try to get the area. Anyone can give me the Q? Conversion. Right. So the, the Q. So Abraham is saying, let's get the Q from the fluid side. This equation Q is H A delta T. That's the heat transfer problem. But from the fluid side, that Q that you are sending to him, what is it going to do? It's going to heat the fluid. Right? And therefore, that Q will be M dot fluid CB fluid multiplied by I don't want to confuse with F thinking that's film temperature so M dot CB time time which is T exit minus T inlet those are the joules per second that you are sending from the pipe into the fluid they will increase the energy of the fluid right all right. So this guy, we have it. This guy, we have it. This guy, we will get it at T uh, mean. How about M dot? Do we know M dot? Rho V A, correct? Rho V A. So I actually know the V. It was given to me. That's the point 0.8. So here is the... Uh, the, the point 0.8 is over here right now how about the, the area so row of course we get row of water right so we got the row 998 most 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 probably 998 we'll get the right temp density but it will not change that much because you guys know that water is incompressible right so how about the area you see my problem why the area is a problem we don't know how many in the vertical direction either. So he's asking about the horizontal direction, how many rows, but that's too much, assuming. It actually, what else? So James, right? Jason. Jason, sorry. You are James. Right, James and Jason, correct. So Jason is saying, let's assume the NT even. But is there any other? Actually, there's no way I can check on my assumption. So no, let's not assume NT. Let's do what? Any other? Right. So Abraham is saying that this area has also NT, and this has also NT into it. The area here, what is that area? It's the total number of pipes, right? So it, of course it has NT into it. How many we have in the vertical direction? And the, the Q or the M dot has also that NT, right? So it will cancel out or basically Maybe we can do it per, per row. So if can we do it per row? Yes, because each row it basically behaves differently or independently from the other row. So we can solve this problem per row. So it's the Q per, per one row and it's the M dot per one row and it's the area per row. Right? This is different from doing it per column. We cannot do it per column because the first column is not the same as the second column is not the same as the third column. But we can do it per row because the first row is the same as the second row is the same as the third row. No, but he didn't ask for NT. All right? He could ask you for NT, but he would have to provide one more information to get to ask you for NT. Like, for example, he would say the total Q that the heater is giving is this much. Then we can calculate the NT. Or he could say the total Q gram per second of water that need to be heated is this much. Then we calculate NT. All right? So let's, uh, let's get the properties and solve this problem. 
So the solution is we start. So that was the solution strategy, right? This is where we are hitting. But the solution will start with telling yourself, I have to get the edge. Therefore, I have to get my in, my Reynolds my Reynolds number. Therefore, I have to get the Reynolds and the parental. Therefore, I need to get the properties, right? Therefore, I need to assume uh, or get the mean temperature so I can get the property, so I can get the Reynolds number, and I get my edge eventually. So properties at uh, mean temperature so mean temperature of the fluid not the surface right the properties is the fluid properties so it's the 15 plus the 65 over 2 and that's 40 and what property you need you need the key for the Nusselt number 0.631 what per meter kelvin you need the 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 prantle 4.32 and you need the mu for the news number 0.65 10 to minus 3 those are all for water pascal second we also said last time that you can write this as kilogram per meter second it's the same thing you should check this yourself. And uh, so the mu will give us the, the Reynolds number, right? We still need the rho for the Reynolds number and for the continuity also. So the rho is 992.1 kilogram per meter cube. No surprise here. Right? The water density is almost 997998. And we need the parental S parental at the surface, remember, because so the surface is at 90 degrees C. That correlation had the parental at the S. It's 196. And finally we need anything else? Any other property we need, do you think? What other property we need? Huh? No, Reynolds is not the property. It's the, the number, the mission number. What other properties like rho and mu and k and anything else you see on front of you? CP. Excellent. CP. For the m dot CP delta T. And the CP is uh, one 4.179 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Right. And actually, we need the density. Of the water at the beginning. So rho at 15 degrees C. Is 999.1 kilogram per meter cube. So what this is rho here. Why do I need rho at the beginning? I need rho at the mean temperature because that's what the news number will be based on. The news number, which is rho V D over mu, will be based on average property, so average temperature. So that's why we need the rho at the average temperature. But why do I need rho at the beginning of the pipes when the velocity was 0.8? Right, because of the continuity. Excellent. Because of this M dot C B, you need to get the M dot at any place. It's okay. We can M dot at the beginning is the same as M dot at the middle, it's the same as M dot at the end. It's just that M dot at any one of those guys is the V at that place multiplied by the row at that place. So since we only know V at the beginning, that's what was given to us, we need the row also at the beginning. So I can say rho v at that place, and it will remain for the rest of the problem the same, but here's the end of. Okay? All right. So 
again if we're in line we don't have a question about where is the minimum area we know that the area the minimum area will be here right between the pipes right and so there is only one formula for in line uh, arrangement which is st over st minus the diameter multiplied by v so that's the three centimeter and the diameter was one centimeter multiplied by which remind me guys when when you go to dropbox to copy the lecture don't delete them from the dropbox don't cut and paste copy and paste because it happened twice this week <laughs> right leave it for other people don't spit in the well after you drink from it <laughs> <laughs> all right multiply by v which is 0.8 meter per second so this would be v max and so it is this v max is 1.2 meter so rather than 0.8 in the middle it will be 1.2 because of the smaller area <coughs> all right so now we are ready to calculate Reynolds based on the diameter which would be rho v max d over mean you got the rows of course that would be rho mean not row at the beginning and mu at the mean temperature the 0 0.653 10 to minus 3 and the v max which we just calculated multiplied by the d which is 0 0.01 and that is uh, 18,000 18,232 and then I will go to the table let's go to the table together actually where is it? here and tell ourselves well the units number was 18,000 so 18,000 that's basically I guess this rule right between 1,000 and 100,000 so 18,000 be here so it's 0.27 Reynolds 0.63 parental 0.36 okay so the Nusselt is 0.27 Reynolds 0.63 parental 0.36 parental over parental S 0.25 you got all those guys right so you can get the Nusselt number 269.3 what's next why did we get the Nusselt number H that's that trick right so Q is H A delta T and we always try to find the correlation to find the Nusselt number so that we can get this H so that Nusselt number is H multiplied by a length scale multiplied by a K and of course if we say that this is the Nusselt number that we will stick to, this is basically assuming N L is greater than 16, so that there is no correlation factor, or sorry, uh, correction factor. All right? We can, we w we could f revisit this. So if if it was like five or seven or eight rows, that Nusselt number should be multiplied by a correction factor that will drop it a little bit right but now we just assume it's it's one right so basically Nusselt D NL is the same as Nusselt D that's the one that we basically said it's for 16 or higher all right so the The, the D is 0.01 and the K is uh, 0.631 all in SI units and that make the H equal to 16,000 994 watt per meter square degree C 
and doesn't matter whether it's decreasy or Kelvin it's the same thing all right we got our H back again to the beginning of the problem so we will say that we have our H now so we will have to say that H A Delta T Grismic mean is the same as M dot C B Delta T fluid and we are doing it only for one row right so we need delta t logarithmic mean we need the m dot for one row so let's get first delta t logarithmic mean so this is 90 minus 15 divided by minus uh, 90 minus 65 over len the whole thing again 90 minus 15 over 90 minus 65 and by len I mean logarithmic difference 45.51 and so 90 minus 15 how much is that 75, right? So this guy, 75, and this guy, 60 minus six, 90 minus 65, that's what, 25, 35? 25. And so if we add 25 plus 75, that's 100, divide over 2, No, what I'm saying is, have we gone the other way? The other route is, let's do delta T1 plus delta T2 over 2. Let's get the mathematical average. Right? The, the hot plate or the hot rods are, are always at 90. This guy come at 15 and leave at 90. Right? Is that correct? No, he leave at 65. The fluid is coming, the water is coming at 15 and it leave at, at 65. So delta T1 between the hot surface and the fluid was 75. Delta T2 at the exit between the surface and the hot fluid is 25. Right? So the mathematical average would be, let's do delta T1 plus delta T2 over 2. Yes. And the equation is uh, that, uh, it's minus. minus T8 and T1. Let's answer your question in a second. But let's first answer, let's make this comment that have we gone the mathematical average? Huh? Mathematical average would be Delta T1 plus delta T2 over 2. Initially, the temperature difference between the hot surface and the fluid was 75. Finally, it is 25. So the mathematical average would be 75 plus 25 over 2, right? That's 50. And the logarithmic mean is 45.5. So that shows you they are close. They are So the mathematical average is, is not totally focused. It's just less accurate. So the accurate way is to go the logarithmic mean temperature difference. All right? All right? And so why there are big difference between them? Because look, 75 and 25. That's like, that's actually what, one third. So 30% difference or something? So it's, let's take this again. 25 over 75, right? So delta T1 over delta T2, that's like almost one third. Right, so that's why it's it's uh, have that difference would been have been the difference been very small that the error between the two of them wouldn't really be too big, but again this is almost accurate. All right now, Ariana, question is that formula. If we go back to this formula that we had, let's look at the formula. So the formula say T S minus T exit. All right? 
minus TS minus T inlet. And your question is, why did you make it TS minus TI and not TS minus T inlet? All right? Not, this is T exit and this is also T exit. So the question is, delta T1 minus delta T2 over len delta T1 over delta T2. How does it compare to delta T2 minus delta T1 over len delta T2 over delta T1? Anyone would like to comment? Because, so Mary is thinking one of them should be negative, the other one, because, I mean, obviously the negative over here. But the answer is, no, they are the same because there will be another sign from here. Because you guys remember len 1 over x is? If you put a negative one minus len x, right? Because len 1 over x is len 1 minus len x. And len 1 is? What's len 1? 0. Right? So len 1 over x is minus len x. And, and basically, so this would be like minus this, and this is minus this. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you are going to say Ts, or basically delta T1, or you start with delta T2. At the end of the day, there is one surface doing this, and the other fluid is, say, doing this, and there is a difference here, and there's a difference here. And that logarithmic mean temperature difference, it will produce the same result exactly as delta t when you do it like this, or you do it the other way. Just make sure that you stick to use the same delta T1 at both sides, at the numerator and the denominator. If you start with the inlet, then do the other, on the other side too at the inlet. So don't mix and match. So it's either T inlet, T inlet, or T exit, T exit. All right? That's an excellent question, actually. So of course, if I have a choice, I will go with the, with the big one. I, I rather see 75 minus 25, rather than 25 minus 75. Of course, this will be minus, and then the minus will be corrected by the other, the, the, the denominator. But just it's more easier to see the len the bigger one minus the over the smaller one just for convenience all right so we got our delta t back again to our problem our main equation so i we got delta t logarithmic mean we got our h we are trying to get a so the only missing piece now is anyone following what's missing The m dot. What's missing is the m dot, right? That that will finish the our problem. So the m dot, and again, there are bunch of rows. We are solving it per only one row. Area per one row. M dot per one row. And if you don't like it, just multiply n and n to the equation that I'm going to write, and it will just be for the whole thing. N t. What I'm saying because the problem is just repeating itself with nt. All right. So the m dot the m dot going in this place is or by row is row a I guess a row or something v. So that row is not at the inlet is nine nine Point one, that's why you got the row at the inlet, multiply by the point eight, that's the velocity at the inlet, multiply by point O three. So that was the ST, point O three, multiply by anyone? M dot is the point O three, that's the ST. Multiply by I'm trying to L. L, excellent. 
L, the that's the L we are talking about, right? So it's the four, how much? Four meter? Four meter. So that M dot is 95.9 kilogram per second. That's our M dot. And therefore, the Q dot, which per row is M dot CP T exit minus T inlet per row again. And it is two zero zero four ten to power seven what and this Q is also H area per row delta T logarithmic mean right and and that area is H that area is by the L multiply by N L multiply by the delta T logarithmic mean which was 45 degree how much? 45 degree right so this is equal to this and therefore NL is 206 right and and if you didn't like this per row thing all you have to do was to multiply in that area you just basically have to multiply n t over here and when it come to the n dot you multiply n t over here so you can see how the n dot basically the n t cancel was from both sides question about this so let's re revise the problem or check review the problem quickly so what was going on is that heat transfer using bunch of pipes water is being heated from one temperature to the other and you would like to calculate the area that need to do this so we basically said well that Q heating the the water that Q is eventually like in any other Conviction problem is going to be H A delta T. We just made the delta T a little bit more accurate today by using logarithmic mean temperature difference. All right? And that Q that's coming from convection is going into the fluid. So it's M dot C B delta T fluid. All right? Is asking about the area, so we better get everything else. All right? We calculated the M dot from rho E V, we calculated the H from the heat transfer over a bank of cylinder because it's not just one cylinder right and that require properties to calculate the new number and the parental at the mean temperature and the parental at TS once we calculate the new number we came up with the H and basically we have now everything we just calculate the area out of it right so the external heat transfer coefficient problem we will always have QHA delta T and he will ask about one of those things either the Q or the area or the delta T and there is always a correlation to give you the H in form of Nusselt number that's usually most of the time it's just Reynolds multiplied by a plant you just have to put your hand on the right coefficient and right power questions